poppin' y'all, welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we're taking a look at some, an, another anime series review. We have done some of these before in the past, but I have updated the series to make it bigger and better, so the videos are longer and I go more in-depth with my opinion on the series, just because I, had a, I, I didn't like how the old ones turned out, and I just wanted to improve them, and make them better, and make them sort of fit, and more sort of upgrade to the channel standard which I'm currently raising the bar for all the time. So here is Demon Slayer Season 3. I was going to do my Tanjiro impression for here but uh, I can no longer do it given the fact that my voice has got deeper since I w used to be able to do it back when Season 1 came out. But with my old anime reviews I used to uh, just talk about and do a quick overview of the series in like two minutes and I didn't think that was good enough or worth the time. I would literally just talk about the animation, the voice acting, and that would be done. But talking about the animation, there is a flashback scene in this season of season three and it does show the old animation and it just, given the comparison, the animation for this has come so far. It looks so good. The animation is so clean, and the the visual effects of the swords are so cool. Although they're not real, I don't like that decision. I don't think that is a good decision. Like the fire, the water, the flames, it's not actually there. You can't actually see that, that's just a visual representation of like the power moves and the power sets. But I don't think that's, that, that's good, that's a very bad choice because take that away they're just swinging their swords around for no apparent reason in this sort of beginning form to activate their breathing technique and it doesn't really add any sort of power or skill set or sort of f fantasy to it. it sort of takes away from the fantasy vibe but in season three you do lose some of your beloved characters my favorite character Inosuke he isn't in this season a very big disappointment for me However, we do get the Mist Hashira, which I do like. The Mist Hashira is one of my favourite Hashiras, if not my most favourite Hashira, with Tengen coming in a good second place. Zenitsu isn't in this season either. I wasn't a really big fan of Zenitsu, but the only time you really see him is in a flashback. That's it. That's the only time you see Zenitsu, and um, it's a little unfortunate because he's a decent character, and I know he's a fan favourite. This season is a good one, though, because it has two hour-long specials, and I think that is insane for a season. And it does start off with the demons having a meeting, so we do meet the upper moons, and I think they're all so cool. I like majority of them, except the one that lives in a jar. He's the only one I don't like, and he is one of the main demons for this season. And they do take both of them out. The Mist Hashira takes the jar demon out all on his own, and I am so proud of him. Just look at him go. We get more backstory on him as well, and why he's so forgetful. Who Tanjiro reminds him of, which is his father. Just really emotional, and I really like him, and I'm so glad he didn't die, and he still lives to tell the tale. He did start off really arrogant, though, but he does have a nice character arc throughout the season. To be more forgiving, he gets his memories back, and he's more kind-hearted towards everyone now and he is more sort of likely to save people than before. We also have the guy from season one coming back again, I forgot his name, trying to impress his brother, which is another Hashira, which I am so confused about, I did not expect that story at all. And um, we get backstory for him, and he does have some really cool powers. I thought he was part demon at one point, just because he can like heal himself and his eyes go black and his hair goes yellow and spikes up instead of down. It is just so cool. I forget his name, but he uses a shotgun, which came out of fucking nowhere. I did not expect him to use a fucking double barrel. That that just flipped out of nowhere. That's badass as fuck, though. Like, there he is to the right on the screen. Motherfucker uses a double barrel shotgun as well as a sword. That is like a, a perfect fighting combination. You got long range and close range, especially for the demons they're fighting, which I thought was really cool. I don't like the base body demon, but I do like his personalities. Joy and like ha pleasure were two really cool demons and I really liked them. One of them was like a harpy creature who used sound to his advantage. Another one was like angry who used lightning. Joy used a leaf which created wind. And then 
sadness did something. I don't know what sadness had. But it was really weird to have uh, a season without a Nosuke and Zenitsu, two of the like biggest supporting cast who have been here for a while. Oh yeah, the love Hashira shows up as well. I, di I didn't really like her. I thought she was really whiny and she was just used for... She is the character that is used for uh, being sexualized. She is just the sort of fan service for this season and the jiggle physics was really memed about and everyone wanted to see but I don't like her, I don't like her character, I don't like the fan service characters so I tend to just ignore them and focus on everything else because I just find them shit and a waste of time. But this demon is really cool because you can separate and like, like Re re merge back together is I don't know if that's the right word but he can separate into like f six core emotions and then he can come back together and create this absolute badass we had a couple of scenes where people were close to dying but didn't actually die uh, obviously they was saved by uh, main character syndrome they were like plot protection survivors because the Mist Hashira Tobito, I think he was called. Sorry if um, it, I am wrong. It was a weekend ago when I watched this. But he was stuck in, like, a water bubble for, like, three episodes straight whilst we focused on the other characters. I am a little disappointed that he was stuck in a bubble for three episodes straight, but it did give us his backstory, and I do think he would have drowned in that time. Three episodes is, like, what? An hour? Like, the 20 minutes each. That's, like, a good, like, 60 minutes. He was in that bubble for, like, an hour. And Demon Slayer does take place in nighttime because they're always fighting demons. So a good like eighty percent of the series is set uh, during nighttime. But in nighttime, they can have such good contrast with the dark backgrounds, but with the light characters and the light colors here of their powers. With Nezuko's blood now being able to set shit on fire, that added for some really good visuals and good visual effects, and it upgraded Tanjiro's sword from a dark black to a bright red, obviously heating up the metal in the process, and giving him a tactical advantage, and I liked that. Somehow, I didn't like about Nezuko, though, is, spoiler alert, I'm skipping to the end right now, she didn't die. Tanjiro had a real good panic attack. And I'm not saying panic attacks are good. I'm saying that it was a very good, accurate representation of a panic attack. And I'm proud of media to start actually representing panic attacks. After having quite a few myself, uh, seeing it in Puss in Boots, seeing it in Demon Slayer, seeing it in other places as well in popular media being like a really good, accurate representation. Because he was, he was panicking, he was stressing, he didn't know whether he should keep saving his sister, the person who he became a Demon Slayer to do, or do his job as a demon slayer and save three other people. It's family over others. It's that moral decision of saving one life or three lives. But that one life means more to you than the other three. And his panic attack was just so sort of stressful. It made you feel stressed. It built up a good tension. Just him looking backwards and forwards. His heavy breathing. His quick breathing. He couldn't do any breathing techniques because of this panic as well. So it just added more stress and tension in that way. But then when Nezuku... Nezuku? Nezuko kicks him off. And he flies off. And you just see her burning and crumbling away. It was so upsetting. I don't like Nezuko as a character, but it is still a sad scene. I didn't cry, but it was a very sad scene nonetheless. But then, like, what, ten, five minutes later, she comes back. Tanjiro is sat crying on the floor that she's dead and gone. She's stumbling. The camera moves to her point of view. She's stumbling towards Tanjiro. I don't know why she's stumbling, because in the next, like, scene, she's perfectly fine. I knew it was Nezuko straight off the bat because of how she was stumbling. I've seen a lot of other people say, like, think it was a demon that was walking towards him that was still alive. But I knew it was Nezuko, and I thought Tanjiro would have turned around, and she would have turned to dust, and it would have been so emotional. But no, Tanjiro turns around, poof, she's fine. I did not expect that at all. Lol, watch this before me. Lolita is my girlfriend. Definitely go check out her Instagram, her TikTok, her Twitter, all of that. Go check it out. But... She watched this before me and she told me that Nezuko died. So I was fully expecting her to die. So I was really salty for like the last five minutes that they built up her death so much for them to pull the old-fashioned switcheroo right at the end. I thought it was a really cheap cop-out 
And I would have liked to have seen how Tanjiro dealt with it, how Tanjiro dealt with the grief of her death, like in the next season or the next movie, whichever one we get next. But no, she's alive and she's now more human than demon. She still has her demon powers. She still has her fangs, her demon eyes. She has her claws. She can still grow and shrink because she sits in the box still. But it does provide further plot because now Muzan are if you much prefer the name Michael Jackson, uh, he now wants to eat Nezuko. And because she is the only demon that he's seen in his 1,000 years that can survive in sunlight. And this moves the season forward because it puts him to the front four of the action. He is now going to be getting more involved with this sort of demon hunt. And we do get a better look at his backstory, which is really cool. So we get a look at all the upper moons. We get a look at his backstory... And we're moving on to the next season. Hopefully, I am begging that Inosuke and Zenitsu come back for the next season because they are two of my most favorite characters. But continuing back to sort of the rest of the sea, it was a sword village arc. So loads of people were in those sword village, big nose, big mouth masks. And I thought they were really cool. I thought they were good character designs and the masks definitely differentiated them and made them look a lot different. And then we got to see, like, one of the main sort of sword makers under the mask, and everyone went feral because he was attractive. I've just seen thirst traps of him all over TikTok, all over Instagram. I didn't think he looked that good. But everyone was doing, like, thirst traps over these demons as well. Like, de these were some of my favorite demons. I, much, I still prefer the green-haired one from the Entertainment District arc, but... These are really cool as well. The happy one was my favorite, the orange-eyed one. And I don't know, I just thought it was cool with, like, screeches. Uh, there was Weird Fish Demon as well, which came from the Jazz, because he was a water-based demon. Uh, again, he was an ugly-looking fuck. I really didn't like him. And I'm really happy with this season. There is a lot of disappointing parts and a lot of reasons that I'm disappointed. Again, Tanjiro was just crying for most of it, saying, I need to save Nezuko, I need to save that guy, I need to do that. I can't do this, I need to breathe. I was also quite shocked at the fact that he can now thunder breathe. That was the only Zenitsu flashback, because Tanjiro can now thunder breathe. And I am now shocked. Apparently, you can learn breathing types. I only thought you got one. I thought Tanjiro was the special one who could do two. He could do water and a fire. But no, Lol told me that you can do any number of breathing types. You just have to learn it. And I was like, oh shit, serious? I thought you could only have two. So that's a new learning knowledge for me. One person could have infinite breathing types. They just have to learn it. Oh well. But I'm, I'm really happy with how this season came out. Everything was just so good. I'm quite disappointed in the character selection though. But the Miss Tasha, I didn't make up for that. But I am going to give it this good 7 out of 10. It's not perfect, but it does have its goods, and it does have its lows. And I'm a big fan of the season. I didn't explain it all. I didn't go fully through it, because I do want you to have some experiences with it yourself. Go watch it. Go have fun. I didn't want to spoil it all for you, so you can still go and watch it without everything being told to you by me. But that's my opinion. I think it's an excellent watch. Go watch it now. It's on Crunchyroll and Funimation. All right, bye.